clinical practitioner, it is incredibly important to be able to diagnose T-spine injuries quickly, as they can lead to permanent neurological deficit and death. An important part of screening for T-spine injury is being able to adequately interpret a C-spine X-ray. The patients that require a C-spine X-ray are those that have endured high energy trauma, or those that have endured low energy trauma and have any of the following signs. Midline cervical tenderness, focal neurological deficit, decreased level of consciousness, distracting injuries and intoxication. And remember that imaging should never delay resuscitation. There are three standard C-spine views. These are the lateral view, which is the most informative view. The anterior-posterior view, otherwise known as the AP view. This is not as informative, but provides corroborative information to the lateral view. The open mouth view, also called the odontoid pig view. This view is primarily to view the lateral mass ligament. A normal C-spine x-ray does not necessarily exclude significant injury. And in this situation, it's important to consider the clinical signs and context, and obtain further imaging, such as a CT scan or MRI, if there is a high risk injury, focal neurological deficit, limited clinical examination, or unclear x-ray finding. Before analyzing an x-ray, it is important to go through the anatomical structures that we are going to be examining. In green, we can see the cranium. On the same lateral view, we can see the external acoustic meatus in pink and the mastoid process in green. Also on the lateral view, we can see the mandible and maxilla as highlighted in pink. And we can see these same structures in the AP view. On the lateral view, we are seeing C1 in yellow. In the AP view, it might be a bit difficult to distinguish between C1 and C2. But having an open mouth view gives us a good view of C2. Furthermore, when looking at the open mouth view, we can see the odontoid process of C2, the lateral mass of C1 in red, the superior articular surface of C2 in blue, and the bifid spinous process of C2 in green. The C2 has been highlighted again in the lateral view in yellow. Here on the lateral view, we are looking at C3 in yellow, C4, C5, C6, and C7. Also on the lateral view, the vertebral canal has been highlighted in pink, and the spinous process of C2 in orange. We can see the transverse process of C4, also in orange, and the vertebral body of C5 in blue. The thyroid cartilage of the trachea can be seen highlighted in orange. And here we can see the prevertebral soft tissue highlighted in pink. So here we are looking at the lateral view. The first thing we need to do is look at the coverage of the x-ray. We need to ensure that all vertebrae from the base of the skull to the top of T2 are visible. If T1 is not visible, we need to order a repeat image in Summer's view. Next, we check the alignment. So we want to look at the soft tissue line, the anterior line, which is the line of the anterior longitudinal ligament, the posterior line, which is the line of the posterior longitudinal ligament, and the spinolaminar line, which is the line formed by the anterior edge of the spinous processes. We need to ensure that these are all in line. For example, that they are not disrupted and do not contain any steps. And remember that the spinal cord lies between the posterior and spinolaminar lines. Next, we want to look at the bone. Trace the cortical outline of all the bones to identify fractures. Spinous processes. Draw an imaginary line through each spinous process and ensure that the lines through two consecutive spinous processes converge. Disc spaces. Ensure that all of the disc spaces have approximately equal heights. Next, we look at the prevertebral soft tissue. First, we check for widening, which could indicate a prevertebral hematoma. So normal prevertebral soft tissue would be narrow above C4, which is less than a third of the vertebral body width, and wide below C4, so less than 100% of the vertebral body width. Finally, we look at the edge of the image at all other visible structures. Here we are looking at an AP view of the C-spine. So just like the lateral, the first thing we need to do is examine the coverage. Ensure that all vertebrae from the base of the skull to the upper thoracic spine are visible. Alignment. The lateral edges of the C-spine and the spinous processes should be aligned. For the bone, 
Trace the cortical outline of all the bones to identify fractures. Remember, fractures are less visible on this view than on the lateral view. Spacing. The spinous processes should be spaced relatively evenly. Soft tissues. Look for surgical emphysema. And edges of the image, check for injury to the ribs and lung apices. Here we are looking at the open mouth view of the C-spine. So first we look at our coverage. Ensure that the odontoid peg and lateral processes of C1 and C2 are present. Alignment. Ensure that the lateral processes of C1 and C2 are aligned. Spacing. Ensure that the distance between the peg and the lateral masses of C1 are equal on both sides. If the spaces are not equal, it implies there was rotation of the patient's head when the image was obtained. And in this case, the alignment of the lateral processes can still be assessed. We shall now apply what we have learned to a pathological cervical spine x-ray. In the x-ray featured, there is a loss of alignment of the anterior line in C2 and C3, as C2 is anteriorly displaced. If you follow the cortical outline of C2, it shows that it has been fractured. This fracture of C2 is called a hangman fracture.